What's up guys, Jordan here with Objective-C Toro's Lesson 30 while loops. And as you remember last lesson, we went over the for loop, which is used when you know how many times you'll have to go through the loop. Now while and do while loops, which we'll go over next lesson, repeat until a condition is met. So basically for the most part, you can look at the top of a for loop and figure out the number of iterations for it. Whereas with while loops, they're mainly used when you don't know exactly how many times the loop will repeat. So here is the generic uh, setup for a while loop. You have while, which tells the compiler that this is a while loop. Then you have the condition, which is evaluated. And if that condition is true, the statements are run. If it's false, the statements right after the loop are executed and the program continues. Now, let's say the condition was true. So the statements to execute are run. And then the loop goes back to step one, and the loop runs until the condition is false. Now some details about while loops. Now, the loop may actually never be run because the condition is usually contingent on outside conditions. So let's say we have this loop that runs only if a user enters information into the England transaction budget. Now, if the user only entered information into the Europe transaction budget, this loop wouldn't run because one of the conditions was for the user to do something, to enter uh, information into the England transaction budget. That user didn't do that, so the condition is false. So that's a good example of how, as you're typing up this loop, you really have no control over whether it's going to run or not. And also just remember that the value of the condition has to change in order for the loop to end. That's something very basic with loops, but just remember that because you, in most cases, you probably won't have control over whether or not that's going to change uh, right within a close range of that loop. It may be someplace way off in your program. Just kind of, you'll just have to know what all is going on in your program. And while loops act very similar to for loops in the generic example, but usually you will be testing an outside condition. And a good example is updating the position of an object in a maze as the user moves his iOS device. In this example, you wouldn't know how many times the loop will need to repeat. Now, you can use a uh, while loop as a for loop. Uh, how you would do this is you first have to declare some value. So in our case, int n equals 1. Then you set up the while loop. You have the condition n is less than 3, and then you have to increment it at the end of that loop. So just remember you have to declare the variable outside the loop and the, inc and the increaser at the end of the statements. And notice that while loops simply accept a condition. So there's no spot for a counter or an incrementer. It's just one spot for a condition. So all in all, the basic difference between a for loop and a while loop for loop, you know how many times the loop will run. While loop, it's more iffy on whether the loop will run or not, and it runs until the condition, which remember is based on an outside condition, is false. So now we're going to jump into Xcode and code up a while loop. Okay, so here we are in Xcode, and there really isn't a lot for us to do this time. All we're going to be doing is just adding a while loop around this transaction right here. And we are going to be creating this while loop in such a way that it's very similar to the for loop right up here because what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually declare a little variable and then assign a value to it and that's what the condition is going to be in the while loop so it's not exactly how we would necessarily use a while loop in a regular tradi traditional program but nonetheless we're still working with the mechanics of the while loop and we're still understanding how it runs and works so that's the important part so while the condition n is less than 3 then the brace okay um, we have to make those few modifications so change this to a transaction, just like last time, then a transaction, and then let's make this one the same as above, so it's n times 100, so it'll change by 100 increments each time, and the type is charged this time, and then add object a transaction, then remember at the bottom n plus plus. And that's all that we're going to be adding 
for this lesson. So we can go ahead and build and run. Save all. So the first two lines are the exact same thing as last time. Then the next line, charging $100 in foreign currency, leaves $575, just what we expected. Then charging $200, notice the increase by $100 in foreign currency, leaves $325. So everything built and ran just like we expected. Uh, just remember that a while loop only has a spot for a condition, and that condition is contingent on an outside condition. In this case, the outside condition was int n equals 1. So even though we set this while loop up very much like uh, a for loop, it still runs the same basic way as any other while loop would, uh, aside from the part that we had the incrementer at the end of our loop. Typically, uh, this value would be changing somewhere else in the program, but uh, how we set up this while loop is completely fine. We still understand all the mechanics and basics of a while loop, um, and it's a whole lot easier to work with. But thanks for checking out this video. Uh, be sure to subscribe up above to be notified when I upload Lesson 31, where we'll be going over the do while loop, and we'll just be adding another transaction here and then adding the do while loop around it. So uh, be sure to subscribe to be notified about that and comment any suggestions or questions down below be sure to like this video if it helps you out and i'll see you in the next one real soon thanks for watching